So, um, do you prefer me calling you the delegate here? No. Okay. I don't. No. I prefer you calling me Borg. <laughs> You're saying my house, eating my pie. Yes, all of that. <laughs> um, Hello everyone who lives in State District 20, Maryland, which means you likely live in White Oak, Silver Spring, or Tacoma Park. This video is for you, because we knocked your door, and you privately shared with us on a microphone what you wanted our representatives to work on. So here is the response back from one of your state representatives, Delegate Lorig Sharkudian. So traffic is bad, people kept saying it kept getting worse. Yeah. Um, People talked about their commute time going from 10 to 15 to 30 minutes over the time sure. they lived in White Oak, going from that area of White Oak to Bethesda, and then they also talked about other parts like tolls and how they didn't want tolls either, but they felt like they needed traffic to be less. Yeah, sure. <laughs> do, do. So I think, well, and so I think that the, the thing about the traffic situation is that it requires um, comprehensive planning. I mean, the way that you move people uh, requires that you look at how do people um, how do people get on buses, get on metros, get on trains, um, walk, bike, get in cars. And really, with the climate crisis, the cars need to be lower on that prioritization list. Mm -hmm. um, and the good news is that when we prioritize all of those other things, buses and trains and um, pedestrian and and, uh, and bike routes it actually also helps with traffic. So um, <clears throat> so I think right now, um, you know, the county is working on the BRT routes, and so that will help to some extent in that, in that corridor. Um, it's been a long time coming and still a little ways, a little ways to go, but that's soon. Um, but I think the bigger issue and really where we've been struggling is that we're interested in having a conversation with the Maryland State Highway Administration and the Maryland Department of Transportation about how do we move people um, and there's been an attempt to have those conversations in particular about 270 and 495 which of course affects everything nearby as well um, and the governor came back and basically said fine we're, we're not fine he wasn't responding to us he just said we're widening 495 and that and he, he's he's presented it as a take it or leave it mm -hmm. and we're doing it in a way that is as unequitable as possible you know he's saying that we're going to do it with toll lanes that as somebody said in in the podcast you know go up to potentially go up to $45 or more um, and the entire premise of widening 495 with toll lanes um, for toll lanes to work, for them to make money, they're pri they've privatized the whole project. So for them to make money, for a private company to make mm -hmm. money off of toll lanes, um, there has to be enough traffic in the non-toll lanes that people would pay $45 or $30 or whatever it is to get in a, in a non-toll lane. So basically you have a situation where folks who have money can move faster and they're moving faster is dependent on folks who can't afford that sitting in more traffic. So that's yeah. that's sort of the big picture of the the toll lane situation and and we it's gotten worse and worse as we as we we this, the Montgomery County delegation, District 20 delegation, Montgomery County Council, Montgomery County executive and we're all for the most part on the same page the yeah. delegation and the leadership um, and the governor, you know, originally indicated that he was going to um, uh, engage with us and, and look at other options and consider yeah. transit and dedicate some of the money to transit and um, and instead uh, you know the latest uh, proposal that they have that they're going to be actually considering at the um, Board of Public Works on next week uh, yeah. December 4th I'm not sure how you're what the timing of when this goes to folks but December 4th meeting of of the Board of Public Works um, is uh, is um, you know, completely ignores all the proposals that Montgomery County has made and even takes off the commitment they made about 10% uh, towards transit, of the, of the income towards transit. They take that off the table or they're not guaranteeing it and um, folks probably know they took off the table their commitment to not take any homes. Now they are talking about taking homes, specifically homes in District 20. Mm -hmm. um, so. So that so that's the Beltway stuff, and I'm I'm sharing that because I think one person did mention one person that did one person asked you to hold it up in court. Well, and so that's interesting. That is actually a really good option, and it, it's not likely to be me um, holding it up in court, but it's likely to be the Maryland Parks and Planning, Maryland National Parks and Planning Commission, because the one thing that we sort of have mm -hmm. uh, 
as a way to block this is that they would need to take parkland and they need to take the Slyer Creek in that, that yeah. sort of area. And so, um, and the most recent sort of um, event at the Parks and Planning Commission meeting, um, the, the Parks and Planning Commission was very clear that they weren't supporting this process. Okay. And so, uh, so they would be the one likely to, to hold it up in court. And I, and I think it is possible to hold it up in court until Hogan's not governor anymore. And then we gotta get somebody in there who's a, you know, has a vision about transit and transportation that absolutely moves people and absolutely we need to fix the traffic situation, mm -hmm. um, but do it in a way that's equitable, um, that doesn't give away our public mm -hmm. lands and our homes, yeah. private companies and you know all that. I think somebody else talked about how there are only buses, for example, in that White Oak area mm -hmm. during rush hour. And they were like, nobody even knows, that. not that many people know about the buses. And then they're only from this small time in the, in the very early a.m and then like two hours at p.m. and that's another conversation about traffic. It also leans into like, how are people gonna get to downtown Silver Spring or to the DC hub or the metro area there? Yeah, well, it, right, and so the limited, limited, um, limited, uh, sorry, the limited hours of yeah. certain buses then also reinforces if somebody has a car, they're gonna drive the car because if yeah. they have to stay at work late, and they miss whatever that window is. So, um, you know, it's a, it is a it's a it's a bigger picture issue of an ongoing need to invest in um, in transit, as well as in I think somebody mentioned or p folks talked about the um, timing the lights. Um, you know, what was the name of the? Um, the There's probably down here about lights. Uh, Right, the smart lights. Oh, smart lights, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I am, um, I'm following up with the State Highway Administration on that. I, ha I, I So I'm in a regular conversation with State Highway Administration. Mostly my conversations with them mm -hmm. uh, are related to uh, pedestrian safety. We've been asking them, State Highway um, has historically been just about moving cars. But yeah. in District 20, we have a lot of state highways that go through neighborhoods, um, communities, people live, people need to cross the street, people yeah. need to walk down the street, children yeah. need to go to school. Yeah. And um, and they also go through neighborhoods where there is a lot of dependency on transit, and so you need to get across the street to get to the bus stop. Mm -hmm. And I you know we talked about the one at, um, on Columbia Pike and um, Oak. Oak Leaf. Oak Leaf. Oak Leaf. It's Oak really similar to Three Oaks. There's, there's a lot of Oaks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so there's uh, so so you know part of what we've been doing is taking state highway administration out. Most recently, we were on yeah. um, University Avenue, and asking them to walk it with us and pointing out places and saying That's this does cool. not work for people. Yeah. Here's why this doesn't work yeah. for people, yeah. um, and then asking them to fix it. And it's um, and we've we've made some progress. We've been doing this. I've been mm -hmm. in office for. Mm -hmm. less than a year now um there's some areas where there's places that we've we've gotten through some of the low-hanging fruit of crosswalks and that kind of That's thing amazing. and there's some bigger picture pieces but i will um you know add this uh oak leaf drive to yeah. um an area that i talked to state highway about and ask about especially because you have curb cuts there so yeah. it seems like um <laughs> they, yeah yeah well right yeah i'm not sure why there isn't and is there a signal there no, no I can't. there's no signal so there's, there's a like, we need to signal it and the or at least or at least hawk hawk signals um so anyway so we spent a lot of time on on pedestrian safety with the state mm -hmm. highway administration um and looking at um looking at where bus stops are yeah. how to get people across yeah. safely those kinds of things so this is one question that i have but i think it's relevant um columbia pike i looked it up right before not now, but like, uh, and I learned that it's a U.S. road. Does that change that conversation then at all? No, uh, it's still, yeah, so, so U.S., like even U.S., like Route 95, yes, for yes, example, okay, is okay. also U.S. road. Um, I think it may change where you can get money from to, to okay. fund it, but the State Highway Administration is, 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 is responsible for it, yeah. That's really cool. I think mm -hmm. that that, was, that answers like three people's concerns all about that. Okay, <laughs> that all right. Place. Yeah, we'll talk about that one. Um, so I not, so I will I will say that things move more slowly at State Highway than I wish they did. So when I get an answer on that, I will get back to okay. you. But um, I'm not sure how, how soon that will be. But it's yeah. absolutely on my list now um, yeah. to talk to them about. And this was a lo more local road, but one person that I met out in the community was said that, uh, and this was on Sligo off of Sligo, talked about Sligo Avenue, not Sligo Parkway. Yeah. No, but Sligo, Sligo, Avenue. Yeah. Sligo Avenue in downtown Silver yeah. Spring and going through Tacoma and they were like oh I have to walk here every day for work and it's dark and I don't know if there's enough lighting and I worry about my safety um, 
and I didn't get the chance to go out and film Sligo. I looked at it in the daytime and decided that it, I counted a lot of lights. Yeah, but, but if they're on. But if they're on or not, or was not, another yeah. question. I was like, damn. And do you know, was that on Sligo or on Piney Branch? If Sligo hits Piney Branch, those crosswalks, yeah. by the way, new crosswalks there, that was one of the ones that we worked on. <laughs> um, painted, yes. Um, yeah, so um, I actually, well, um, is it, because if it's on Sligo Avenue. I'm sorry, it was a bit sad, but. If it's, if it's on the avenue itself, that's a, a county road. So kind of Sligo it. Avenue is so so it hits Piney Ranch and that intersection is a state highway. Okay. Um, but I could, um, I don't know if you're also connected to county government. Um, I need to get connected. To yeah, county government. yeah. So you could always start with like a three one one call and be and talk to them and just be like, hey, what's up? This is there's not a lot of lights here on Sligo. Avenue. Or they're off. Yeah. So I think the way it works is that it, I think that it's Pepco who has to. I think that the lights themselves, I know when in the past when I've Oh, been, if they're off. Mm -hmm. If their lights exist. If there's lights they're and they're not working, you call okay. Pepco. And um, there's a number on every um, post. And you call and you say, like, you know, light number 75362, whatever it is, is out. I and they're no supposed idea. to come fix it. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then in terms of getting additional lights, though, I don't know the county process. I mean, I could, if, if you if, if you want to follow up, like with... Um, I'll definitely follow up. First, I have to go at night and see... Tom Hucker's <laughs> office, yeah. Or um, or I can, uh, if, you send, if, if, uh, if you connect me with a person and I, directly, I can... I could follow you up. You can follow up, okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah, if you want to do like an email introduction. I'm sure they would love that. They were actually talking to me. I caught them randomly, and the, and they were not living in the homes. They lived in Silver Spring, and they were like, yeah, I'm managing this one building here. Um, and they were like, and I was like, yeah, if you can give me your email, I mean, I can, oh, we'll send a response back, and they'll be like, does this work? And I was like, I don't know. I mean, we <laughs> can, we'll uh... see. <laughs> okay, you wanted to end on your MGA note. Oh, oh, yeah. So for folks don't know, the General Assembly... So session starts. So a lot of people, to your point, like don't necessarily know kind of what our work looks like. And so we have a 90 day session where we consider th 3,000 bills, somewhere between 2,500 and 2,000. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty awesome. Uh, it's okay. intense. But, uh, but here's what I will say about it because of that, mm -hmm. and we all have, you know, one staff person, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they're part time off session, full time during session. It's a, it's a ton of work, and it is, and so what I like to stress for constituents is how important their involvement is. I think people think a lot about um, the federal government, you know, that's, that's what we kind of see more in the news, but um, people aren't always thinking about how much actually does get affected by state government policies. Yeah. And, states um, can guarantee rights. Huh? States can guarantee rights. Yes, and, and people need to come and ask for what they want. So I'm thrilled to have this podcast. I also want... Um, uh, would encourage people to, uh, you know, if, they, if people were willing to get on my email list, um, I do send weekly updates of like what's happening in session. Weekly. What's going on. Right. It's at the beginning of session is weekly, and then maybe it's like more like a week and a half. I was just, just <laughs> comparing the other <laughs> updates I get from other legislators. Like weekly is impressive. Just, just during session, not just like people don't necessarily okay. want to hear from me weekly off session. But during session, just because things I are mean, moving so fast. Thank you. My Facebook is for that. Um, but so, um, but uh, so, but I also would encourage people to uh, just come to Annapolis. We do so District Twenty. We do a District Twenty night, and maybe you could like let folks you know that you're connecting to. So we do District oh, Twenty yeah, night, yeah. and I've arranged. Last year we arranged transportation. So some people drive, but then yeah. we also arranged like last year we did pickups in Good carpools and stuff. Uh, we actually paid for vans to pick Incredible. people up. We had people up in White Oak. It's a pickup in White Oak in Four Corners and in Tacoma Park, I think, is where we ended up doing it. You guys had a grant for that, or you guys pulled your money? No, we paid for it. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We feed people, too. Okay. But it's good. You know, so come to Annapolis. And I think one of the things that I want people to see is just kind of how... Except, like, you should know where laws are getting made that affect your life and say, come and take a look. And then people will come, they'll have dinner, we'll talk. And then um, usually we do it on a Monday night, and Mondays, Monday nights we have session at night, so people can then watch from the gallery and see like the session taking place. Yeah. And um, so that also any other time, if people want, can get themselves to Annapolis during session. My uh, office, is, you know, come say hi. And yeah. I have snacks. 
for everyone in my office. <laughs> Coffee, yeah. I do, I do. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> but um, you know, if people are interested in working on an issue they care about, it's like I think it's really important. I think it's um, I think that they're you know, as with any government body, paid lobbyists and corporate influence. It's just very easy. You know, people have folks there full time doing their lobbying for them, yeah. and, and residents can also show up and tell their reps what they care about, but mm-hmm. it's harder to do that. And so whenever I have a chance to encourage people to do that, I like to, I like yeah. to do that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And we can also, like I said, uh, like you said, actually, and asked, it's, it's easy for us to give information at the door and just be like, yeah, you can take this right to them if you have something. Yeah. 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 So if, I'll give you some cards actually. Yeah. You, leave. Yes, Welcome please, to yeah. hand people my card. And, and again, like, as we talked about, some of the things are like county issues or whatever. I mean, we'll not necessarily have a solution to everything, but mm-hmm. we'll direct, we won't, we won't leave people hanging. That's cool. Yeah.